Hello, beloved. I am wearing my rose tinted glasses because this is such an extraordinary, life transforming, earth shattering, global changing month. And that is because Pluto is going back into Capricorn, or Capricorn's going back into Pluto for its final path. It's at an extreme degree and it's going to bring whoo, all of our learning since 2008, boom, right centre to our lives. So it is huge. On top of that, at the opposite end of the scale, we have a full moon, lunar eclipse in Pisces. So it's very emotional, darlings, and it's very psychic. Here's your monthly astrology. Aries, you divine creature, let's get stuck in. Now, this month, there's a lot of energy in Virgo. And it's really important. I'm going to start with this, even though it isn't the most significant thing. But I think if you deal with this, the rest of the month will be much easier. So the energy in Virgo is creating a time for you to really look at your boundaries, particularly when the new moon goes into Virgo. That's why you have to think about it now. Think about it from the first. But OK, what can I change? What people don't know about Aries or don't fully appreciate is that Aries will do anything for anyone and are quite vulnerable to people taking advantage of them and overstepping boundaries. But because Aries is so enthusiastic and generous of spirit, you don't even see it until further down the line because you're open hearted. Naturally, you're quite innocent. So you always see the best in people. This month, really reflect on your own boundaries. And if there's anyone in your life that is sort of all take, 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 because you are one of the most giving signs. And also, it's a really important month to look at your health and well-being and to tweak habits and patterns that may be holding you back. But all the answers will be revealed this month. And on that new moon, allow yourself to surrender anything that no longer serves you, any behaviours, anything that you need to change and let go of. And trust me, I know that you know what I'm talking about, right? You might not necessarily talk about it to other people, but you know the things you have to let go of and you know when you're being self-destructive. And this month is all about self-love, putting yourself, I wouldn't say putting yourself first, but putting yourself in a position where you can have the healthiest month to really think about where you want to take your life going forward. Now, let's start at the beginning. On the first, Uranus is going retrograde. There may be some surprises connected to the past. Perhaps people that you had a very long-standing loyalty to. It may be something to do with abundance. The general energy of this month is very much about money, abundance and status because Uranus is in Taurus, which is security and abundance and also the biggest thing, the most huge thing that's happening this month is that Poloto is going back into Capricorn for the absolute final time in our lifetime. We have had 16 years of Pluto in Capricorn. It has created such a huge transformation in the structure of society, in, in money and power dynamics and, and all the things that we've seen from the pande pandemic and the great divide that we're having when people are very extreme in what they're thinking, that is all changing. But when Pluto re-enters Capricorn, we have to think about what is this massive lesson that we've learned or what does this past 16 years mean to us? What's our thinking about status, wealth, abundance, our work, our career? I think you probably notice, well, depending on what age you are, I mean, doesn't really matter how old you are, that since Pluto's been in Capricorn, there has been a shift one way or the other in your life. And this is going to peak now. And if we haven't learned the lessons, they're going to come in hard and fast. But after that, you're going to step through into a, a space of incredible freedom and having real unity and a sense of just totally feeling at one with the world from next year onwards. I would have to say that me personally, since uh, Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008, my life in terms of my security has been vastly benefited from that experience. So it's not all doom and gloom. It may be that you've really gone forward 
and it's about where you're going to take the next steps of your career and your life. But trust me, we will see drama in the outside world. We'll also see drama in terms of people not wanting to give up power, refusing to give up power or going in too powerfully. So I expect there's going to be many dramatic things happening um, on the political stage and in the world in general. But afterwards, it's so much better and so much easier. Another significant thing that's happening this month is on the 4th of September when Mars, our ruler, goes into Cancer. And this is a big deal because it's not the ideal place for it. It can make people a bit moody, can make you a bit moody. But it also, you really want, you're feeling really physical when it comes to your home and family. So you might want to redecorate. You might want to do something in the garden. You might want to do something that's that you, you're having to physically do it. You might be thinking about moving and just go, right, I'm going to make this happen. But in terms of family, there may be more arguments or more disruption there. So it's important that you are aware of that. Otherwise, people can say to you, what's wrong with you? You're moody. And, um, you know, it, it's it's not good. The most wonderful thing you can do with this energy is get cosy and spend time with people that you love. Maybe kind of do some sports together, go dancing, do things that are physical. And that kind of releases the energy. Go on a hike, even better. Uh, Mercury is direct, but it re-enters Virgo on the 9th of September. So there's more conversations about what you need to change, transform and twiddle with when it comes to your habits and patterns. Now, it's super important that you don't get self-critical at this time, nor do you criticise others, because we could be hyper-focused and really over-analyse things. Instead, use that energy to make the changes you need to make Uh, but don't internalise it. And communication is much better from the 12th when Mercury Retro Shadow ends and you're able to move forward in a positive way. Also on the 12th of September, Mercury is sextile Mars and you are able to clarify things and maybe have some real positive and healthy habit change when it comes to your home or your home and family. It really is full on. Now, on the 18th of September, we have a full super moon in Pisces and it's sextile Uranus, the planet of unpredictability. But it's, it's, I would like to think that there will be pleasant surprises. But of course, there is a partial lunar eclipse. And what do I say about lunar eclipses? On a lunar eclipse, we do not see all the information. We only have partial information. Something is going to be revealed. And because it's Pisces, a secret may be revealed. In fact, if we've got a secret, oops, you know, that may be revealed. We will see something and something will be a real revealed, particularly around romantic relationships. If you're in a romantic relationship and it ain't right, you're going to know it's not right. And it, it's quite emotional, but it definitely the revelation will help you in the long run. We have Venus going into Scorpio, which makes you very frisky and very maybe desiring the taboo or getting involved in something where your boundaries aren't clear. It's a time of potential, you know, temptations. So be a little bit careful of that. But it also brings about like uh, big feelings, very big feelings of, of, well, it depends where you're turning them, but like avoid jealousy, avoid obsession and instead focus on, you know, really talking to people about the more primal things in life. You're very super psychic as well at that time. The sun goes into Libra on the 22nd and it's a period actually that's very good for you in terms of your relationships. Mercury enters Libra as well on the 26th. You want peace and you want harmony and you want to chill and it's very important for you. You want everything to be very kind of calm and and lovely Um, and also you're being urged thanks to the sun opposing the north node to look at how your relationships are benefiting your future the universe is saying to you is this relationship you're in or is this person you're attracted to you know does it bode well for your the evolution of your spirit for your growth and where you're going in life anyway it certainly is a month my darlings you take care and i'll speak to you soon Thank you so much for the love. 
you've given me regarding the Nightweight Tarot. If you haven't got it yet, it contains all of my love and passion that I've had for tarot since I was a small child. And the book gives you an easy way to not only work with tarot easily and quickly, but also to manifest. You can get it from the dreaded Amazon or all good bookstores. So thank you once again.